If emotions were people with personalities, it would be an interesting world indeed. Fear might be a nervous, timid person who always second guesses themselves and rarely takes risks. Anger would be loud and outspoken, eager to pick fights and blurt out their opinion without thinking first. Disgust would be a high-maintenance fashionista who looks down their nose at anything that isn't up to their standards. Happiness would be a friendly optimist who's always eager to try new things and spread their good vibes. Sadness would be an introvert who prefers to be alone and wallow in their thoughts. Surprise would be an unpredictable prankster who loves to pull wild stunts and keep people on their toes. Love would be a gentle, caring soul who's always looking out for their friends and family. Each emotion would have its own unique personality, and it would be fascinating to get to know them all. Today, I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat Riley's emotions in the movie Inside Out. Spoilers ahead, enjoy! In Riley's mind, at various times during her life, the five life emotions of joy, sadness, fear, disgust, and anger are generated. Riley is a girl who is born in Minnesota. In Riley's existence, each feeling has a specific function. Fear keeps her safe. Disgust prevents her from getting physically and socially poisoned. Joy tries to make her happy. Yet, because sadness doesn't believe she or the other emotions have a purpose, she's disregarded. The memory orbs, which contain Riley's memories, are made of glass. Five islands representing various facets of Riley's personality are activated in her subconscious by the five most pertinent memories, or core memories. Honesty Island, Hockey Island, Family Island, Friendship Island, and Goofball Island. Once Riley's father launches a new business, her family relocates to San Francisco when Riley is 11 years old. But the relocation van won't show up for weeks. The new home is awful, and the only pizza they offer is California pizza, a pie covered with broccoli. The emotions make every effort to make the shifting procedure enjoyable. But when sadness mistakenly causes a core memory to slip out by touching a joyful memory ball and turning it into a sad one. If I had the power to turn all memories into sad ones, I'm not sure how I'd use it. Sometimes bad memories can be cathartic and make us stronger. But if I did have this power, I think I'd do it with a sense of humor. I would start with any of the funny memories. I would turn the ones that made us laugh the most into sad ones. That way, we could still remember the funny moments, but with a bit of a bittersweet tinge. It would be like a reminder that life isn't always sunshine and rainbows. I would focus on the moments that made us feel the most proud. I would turn those happy memories into ones that make us feel guilty or embarrassed. That way, we could remember how we achieved greatness, but also feel a twinge of regret, knowing that we could have done better. This way, all of our memories would still be with us, but with a slightly different twist. We would still be able to remember the good times, but also the bad times. We would still feel happy, but also a little sad. We would still feel proud, but also a little guilty. We would still feel mad, but also a little sad. And we would still feel loved, but also a little forgotten. This way, all of our memories would be bittersweet. They would remind us of the good times, but also the bad times. They would make us laugh, but also make us cry. They would make us feel happy, but also a little sad. And most importantly, they would make us appreciate life that much more. In the case of sadness, she accidentally turns a core memory into sadness, which may affect Riley's personality completely. Sadness couldn't help it and even blames herself for it. This results in others treating her like a problem as well. It can also be that sadness didn't know she could easily transform a core memory into a sad one. Jory resolves to keep sadness busy by making her read a stack of mind manuals all day because she's aware that memories cannot be altered back once they have made unhappy. Joy instructs Sadness to remain in a chalk circle on Riley's first day of school while the other emotions take over. Riley breaks down in front of her new class as Sadness brings up a memory, creating a new depressing core memory. By employing a vacuum tube that connects to the mental world, Joy frantically tries to get rid of it, but a conflict with Sadness results in the core memories being knocked out of the container. Dealing with a completely opposite personality team member can be a tricky situation. Depending on how different their views and opinions are, it can be difficult to find common ground. However, with a little bit of humor and wit, it is possible to manage the situation with grace and a smile. One way to handle a completely opposite personality team member is to approach them with humor and wit. If you can make a joke or two to lighten the mood, it can help break the tension and create a more relaxed atmosphere. You can also use humor to explain your point of view in a more creative way, which can help bridge the gap between your views and theirs. For example, if you're trying to explain why you think something could be done a certain way, you could say something like, let's approach this from a different angle. What if we look at it from the perspective of a giraffe? This could help to get the other person think more creatively and may even help them to see your point of view. 
Another way to handle a completely opposite personality to a member is to try to find common ground. Even if it may seem like you have nothing in common, there's likely something that you both have a passion for or enjoy. Once you find that common ground, you can use it as a way to start a conversation and build a connection. This can help to create a mutual understanding between the two of you and can make it easier to come to a compromise if you disagree on something. Finally, it can also be helpful to be flexible and open-minded. If the other person has a different opinion, try to listen to their point of view and take it into consideration. You don't have to agree with them, but it's important to respect their opinion and try to understand where they are coming from. This can help to create an atmosphere of mutual respect and understanding, which is the foundation of any successful team. Dealing with a completely opposite personality to a member can be difficult, but with a little bit of humor, wit, and flexibility, it is possible to manage the situation and come to an agreement. By approaching the situation with an open mind and a positive attitude, you can bridge the gap between your views and theirs and create a successful and productive team. Joy and sadness are taken away with the core memories before Joy has a chance to put them back, leaving disgust, fear, and anger to deal with Riley. Riley's former memories are kept in a maze-like location called Long-Term Memory where Joy and sadness travel. Riley's imagined childhood companion Bing Bong, a shabbily attired pink cotton candy elephant cat dolphin monster, soon joins them. Bing Bong wanted to get in touch with Riley by using the rocket of his song-powered wagon. Bing Bong appears to be joyful and upbeat at first but the group soon learns that he's actually depressed because he hasn't had a work since Riley was four years old. He believes that if he doesn't have a purpose, he would eventually stop being. Thus, he badly wants to feel loved again. Despite Joy's best efforts to remain upbeat in the face of this realization, sadness consoles a distraught Bing Bong, leaving Joy more perplexed than ever as to how being sad might benefit Bing Bong. The memory dump, a seemingly endless pit of darkness, under the headquarters were outdated memories go to be permanently deleted from existence, is where Bing Bong learns that his rocket has already been deposited. In the meantime, Riley's thoughts of anger, disgust, and fear are attempting to help Riley navigate her unfamiliar surroundings. During video chatting with Riley's friend Meg, anger unintentionally starts a fight, which leads to the island Friendship Island, which governs this aspect of her personality, collapsing into the dump. The emotions understand that interfering with Riley's personality would further obliterate it, which might have terrible effects. There are many times when we want to disclose the true emotions, but it's best to just let go at the time being. In this case, in the absence of the happy feelings, the negative emotions overtook the life and it caused chaos. As when we're confronted by negative emotions, we always try to fight back. Anger unintentionally trying to handle the situation made Riley rely more on the negativity. So what can we do if there is ever a situation when we are extremely negative? When feeling extremely negative, it can be difficult to stay positive. However, it's important to recognize that these emotions are fleeting and can be improved with a bit of humor. Here are some funny and witty ways to react when feeling extremely negative. Why not try to crack a joke? It may sound cliche, but laughter truly is the best medicine. Making a joke out of a situation can help lighten the mood and help you see the funny side of things. Taking a break can do wonders when negativity clouds other emotions. Step away from the situation and do something that makes you feel relaxed. This could be anything from going for a walk to reading a book. Taking a break can help shift your perspective and make the situation seem less daunting. Talking to a friend or family member about the negativity is also a great start. Talking to someone whose understanding and supportive can be a great way to work through your negative feelings. Not only can they offer advice, but they can also help you see things in a new light. Trying to indulge in your favorite activities will set the mood right. Whether it's playing a game, going to the movies, or even just watching funny YouTube videos, engaging in activities that make you happy can help you to forget your negative thoughts. Finally, learning to accept that negative feelings are okay is of huge importance. It's perfectly normal to feel negative sometimes, and it's important to recognize that these feelings can be temporary. Remember that you have the power to change your mindset and make the best of any situation. Riley's emotions, joy, sadness, and bing bong come up with a plan to take the train of thought back to headquarters, and they start their journey via Riley's many emotions to get to the loading dock areas such as Imagination Island, Dream Productions, and so on. Meanwhile, Riley's life starts to fall apart under the grip of disgust, rage, and fear. She suffers in the new school, loses touch with her parents, and alienates her previous Minnesota friends. Rage, disgust, and fear come to the conclusion that since Riley was only happy in Minnesota, there's no other option than to advise her to go back there and be ready to flee her own family as joint company near their destination. 
Even though it's now so late that the train of thought won't come until the morning, Joy and her companion's emotions eventually make it to the loading dock in the evening. Being on dream duty that night wakes Riley and jumpstarts her train of thought by reawakening a terrifying clown named Jangles from Riley's subconscious. As the other group of emotions carry out their plan and tell Riley to steal from her mother's luggage and pack it to go to Minnesota, Joy, Sadness, and Bing Bong are almost at headquarters. The train of thought is derailed by this action, which leads Riley's honesty aisle to fall apart. Via a malfunctioning recall tube, Joy manages to return to headquarters. But after almost making the core memories depressing, she decides to leave Sadness and Bing Bong behind. After Riley leaves the house, Family Island starts to disintegrate, which destroys the tube and sends Joy into the memory dump. As Bing Bong tries to approach Sadness, the earth underneath him collapses, narrowly sparing Sadness the same fate. It appears like there's no hope left since Joy and Bing Bong will vanish from memory and stop being in a matter of minutes. Living with anhedonia can be a difficult experience, especially for those of us who used to find joy in the simple things in life. However, I've learned that although anhedonia can take away some of the joy from life, it doesn't mean that life can't still be enjoyable. Here are a few tips on how to live with anhedonia and still find ways to bring some laughter and joy into your life. First, find moments of joy in small things. For example, I enjoy my morning cup of coffee, and even though I don't get the same level of excitement I used to, I still find moments of joy in the ritual. I also take time to appreciate the little things like a good view or the sound of birds chirping. Second, embrace humor. Humor can be a great way of finding joy in life. I found that jokes, memes, and funny videos can help me find moments of joy and laughter, even if it's just for a few minutes. I also like to watch stand-up comedy specials and shows. Third, be mindful. Mindfulness can be a great way to help us focus on the present moment and find joy in our lives. I like to take time to be mindful of the beauty around me and also set aside time for meditation and yoga. Finally, don't be too hard on yourself. Anhedonia can be a difficult condition to live with, and it's important to be kind to yourself. I've found that taking some time for self-care, such as getting enough rest, eating healthy, and doing activities you enjoy can help you find moments of joy and happiness. Anhedonia is a difficult situation, but it doesn't mean that life has to be miserable. With the right mindset and strategies, it's possible to find joy and laughter in life, even with anhedonia. In her desperation, Joy begins to recall her fondest memories and go back to brighter occasions, saying, I just wanted Riley to be happy. Looking at one of the memories, she discovers that Riley's parents and friends consoled her when she wasn't happy, which made her happy once more. Joy understands that Riley's primary function for sadness in her personality is to alert people to her needs, and that by shielding Riley from sadness, she was also shielding Riley from genuine happiness. Joy and Bing Bong are energized by this realization when they discover his rocket in the trash. I believe that shielding sadness can give genuine happiness, but only in certain circumstances. For instance, if someone is feeling sad because of a certain event in their life, it can be helpful to take some time to temporarily shield those feelings of sadness in order to help them find a sense of genuine happiness. This can be done by looking at the situation from a different perspective, engaging in activities that make them feel happy, or talking to a friend or family member about the situation. Along with shielding sadness, I also believe that it's important to address and work through the underlying issues that are causing the sadness. Once those underlying issues have been addressed, it can be much easier to find genuine happiness. For example, if someone is feeling sad because of a breakup, it can be helpful to take some time to reflect on what went wrong in the relationship, forgive both parties, and move forward with a newfound sense of self-assurance and confidence. I also see that it's impossible to shield sadness and still experience genuine happiness. It's like covering your eyes and expecting to see the sun. Sure, you may get some warmth, but it's not the same as actually looking up and seeing the sun in its full glory. Happiness is a feeling that comes from within. It's a choice. You can't suppress your sadness away and expect to be authentically happy. That's not how it works. The best thing to do is to acknowledge and accept your sadness, take the time to process it, and then make a conscious effort to find ways to create genuine happiness. No matter how loud they sing, they resolve to utilize it as a means of rising back to the top, but they're shocked when it consistently fails. Once more starting the rocket after realizing they're too heavy combined, Bing Bong hops off as it takes off. Once Joy recognizes Bing Bong's deed of selflessness, she reflects back on Bing Bong in the memory dump. Joy is encouraged by Bing Bong to go rescue Riley. Bing Bong's smiley request to Joy is, Take her to the moon for me, okay? As he begins to fade away. Joy, who's watching Bing Bong pass away with sadness, makes a commitment to attempt to grant his dying desire. 
Joy attempts to make up with sadness and gets the bag containing Riley's most important memories, but when she does, she finds that sadness has fled from her. Climb aboard a cloud and take it off, certain that Riley is better off without her. Joy jumps off the trampoline on Family Island, grabs sadness and sends the two soaring toward headquarters using different equipment from Imagination Land. Rage attempts furiously to smash the thick window, separating them from the other emotions with a chair. Disgust has a plan in case this doesn't work. Disgust deliberately taunts Anger's intelligence as he becomes agitated, infuriating him and setting his head on fire. He's used as a blowtorch by Disgust to smash the window and let Joy and Sadness come back. When the other emotions ask her to stop Riley from going away and heal the connection between her and her parents, Joy hands power over to Sadness, which surprises the others. Riley's control panel is effectively fixed when the thought of running away is successfully eliminated from her head. As a result, Riley gives up with her plan to elude her anxious parents and returns home. I've heard some wild stories about why kids might run away from home, and some of them might make me laugh. I mean, sure, the serious stuff has to be taken seriously, but sometimes kids just want a little bit of fun and adventure. And what's wrong with that? For starters, I guess some kids run away from home just to explore the world and see what's out there. Maybe they're tired of being told what to do and want to make their own decisions. Maybe they're curious about different cultures and lifestyles and just want to go out and experience them. I've also heard of kids running away to get away from the stress of school and homework. Sure, their parents want them to do well in school, but sometimes they just want a break from it all. Or maybe they're just trying to avoid that math test they're sure to fail. Another reason I've heard kids run away is to have a little bit of freedom. They want to break away from their parents and do what they want when they want. They want to be able to go out and stay out late, or maybe even just go to the local mall and hang out with friends. I've also heard of kids running away to find out who they really are, to be able to express themselves in ways they can't at home. Maybe they want to dress differently or listen to different music. Lastly, I think some kids run away because it's just plain fun. I mean, what could be more exciting than run away and having an adventure? Plus, it's a great way to get away from all the drama and stress of home life. So while I don't think running away from home is ever a good idea, I understand why some kids do it. It's a way to escape reality and explore the world. And who knows, maybe they'll even learn something along the way. In Riley's case, she may have decided to run away as she felt unheard and unimportant. Sorrow receives the good memories from Joy and they transform into sad ones. Sorrow sweeps over the panel and Riley eventually tells her parents how she really feels as she sobs confessing that she hates San Francisco and longs for her former life in Minnesota and that she had been being cheerful because she was worried that they would become upset if she stopped being their happy girl. Riley's parents acknowledge that they are as upset and start to reassure her. As humans, we often ask, why do I get sorrows and why is it important to embrace sadness? My answer is simple, because it's there and it's part of life. Sure, it's not always the most pleasant of emotions, but it's a necessary one. Sadness is a natural reaction to pain, heartache, and loss. It's a sign that we're human and that we're capable of feeling things on a deep level. We can't always be happy and it's important to accept that sadness is part of life. When we deny our sadness, we can become disconnected from our emotions in our environment. We may even become depressed if we don't allow ourselves to feel it. Sadness isn't all bad though. It can be an incredibly powerful emotions that can lead to positive change. By embracing sadness, we can learn more about ourselves and our emotions. We can gain insight into why we feel the way we do. We can also use it as an opportunity to grow and improve ourselves. Furthermore, embracing sadness can have a positive effect on our relationships. When we are open to talking about our feelings, we can create stronger bonds with our loved ones. We can also learn to be more understanding and supportive of others who are struggling. Finally, embracing sadness can be therapeutic. It can give us a chance to reflect in our lives and make positive changes. We can use it to work through difficult emotions and ultimately come out stronger and more resilient. So why is it important to embrace sadness? Because it's part of being human and it can lead to positive changes in our lives. Riley's memories were often turned into happiness as her emotions didn't want her to feel bad. However, due to this very reason, Riley was not communicating with her parents things she found difficult and hurting. In cases like this, Riley and everyone who has been in the same space as her should focus on communicating the emotion to adults around them because it's really important that they understand the emotions. Riley has healed after several months. She now possesses new personality islands, the majority of which were produced by mixed core memories. Agar suggests that Friendship Island is run by Joy Anger Core Memory by noting that he enjoys how it has grown with a new friendly argument area. 
However, when things start to return to normal, and Riley, now 12 years old, adjusts to life in a new city, sadness is finally given the same respect as the other four emotions, and Joy quietly recalls Bing Bong's sacrifice. Eventually, the five emotions now possess a bigger, more comprehensive console that allows them to work together and aid Riley more effectively. Joy brushes off Disgust's observation of a giant red alert with the caption puberty as being not significant. I find puberty to be a dangerous emotion because it's a time of so much change and uncertainty. I mean, I'm trying to figure out how to navigate this new world of hormones and acne, and it can be a bit overwhelming, but I like to take a lighthearted approach to it. I think of it as an adventure, and I focus on all the positives that come with it, like newfound independence and the ability to make my own choices. Sure, there are bumps along the way, but I'm confident that I'll make it through with a smile on my face. I also embrace the humor and the whole experience. When I'm feeling particularly overwhelmed, I tell myself that puberty is just like a roller coaster. Sure, it's a bit scary, but it's also exciting and thrilling. I mean, it's not every day that you get to experience so many new emotions and sensations. So while I understand that puberty can be a dangerous emotion, I also think that it can be a fun and exciting experience. At the end of the day, the most important thing is to stay positive and make the best of the situation. After all, I'm sure I'll look back at this period of my life and laugh at all the funny things that happened. There's no reason to feel embarrassed or ashamed of being a teenager. It's a special time that everyone should embrace and enjoy. Disgust wonders what puberty does, which I'm sure they figure out pretty soon. Riley picks up a boy's water bottle during a hockey game as his own emotions are seen flipping out in his head. A loud girl, klaxon alert can be heard, which may be a sign of things to come for Riley's emotions in the future. The segments depicting the feelings of other characters, including Riley's instructor, the Pete's employee, the cool girl, Jangles the clown, Gary the bus driver, a dog, and a cat are also shown during the credits. And that's all for today's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to many such videos. Thanks for watching and take care.